why are these singular values of any particular interest? Well, because if we have a square matrix, an m by m matrix, we can compute eigenvalues for that matrix. But if we have a non-square matrix, computing eigenvalues is particularly tricky. The next best thing that we can compute that's analogous in a way to our eigenvalues are our singular values, which of course we get in this sigma matrix of our singular value decomposition. And so that's where we will start. We will start by figuring out how we can compute these singular values. Now the way that we're going to do this actually is quite simple. We will either compute A transpose A, which will result in an n by n dimension matrix, or we will compute a by A transpose, which will result in an M by M square matrix. Both of these are going to nevertheless result in a square matrix. And so we can compute the eigenvalues for that matrix product. To get the singular values, we will just take the eigenvalues we compute and take the square root of them. The square root of the eigenvalues of A transpose A or A by A transpose will just be a singular value. But to better understand this, we're going to need to take a quick detour and review some of our understanding about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. If we have some square A matrix we can t and we are working with it in a type of linear system, our A matrix multiplied by an eigenvector is going to be equivalent to an eigenvalue times that eigenvector, really the eigenpair. For a square a matrix, we will have multiple eigenvalues and eigenvectors that we can group into matrices. So the this lambda matrix right here on the far right is going to be a square diagonal matrix similar to our sig sigma matrix, except it contains our eigenvalues. Our eigenvectors are grouped to be the columns of our Q matrix in this case, so we're not really changing anything. Thus, for us to represent our A matrix properly, we can compute this right here, which is better known as the eigen decomposition, where we have our Q matrix containing the eigenvectors of an A matrix, and the lambda matrix being, again, a square diagonal matrix that has our eigenvalues along that diagonal. Now, if we come back to our a matrix right here that is non-square where we can compute a singular value decomposition for this matrix to get an understanding of our U and V transpose matrices and how we might get them we're going to take a look at what happens when we compute A transpose A for example. When we compute A transpose A we will get V sigma transpose U transpose by U sigma V transpose. Notice that we get a U transpose U right in the middle here. And our U matrix and V matrices are orthonormal matrices, meaning that it gives us back the identity matrix. So we will simplify this all down to being V sigma squared V transpose because the transpose of a diagonal matrix is just itself. And so if we stack this up to a square matrix that we get for A by A transpose, we know that it will have an eigen decomposition because we can compute the eigenvalues for it. And if we look very closely at each one of these, notice that Q and Q inverse, we have Q and Q inverse, and we have V and V transpose that stack up to one another. V transpose is just V inverse, so those are very close to one another. And so what this gives us is our relationship between our eigenvalues and our singular values telling us that the singular values are just going to be the square root of the eigenvalues based off of this relationship. For the case of m being less than or equal to n, well, of course, we're going to use a by a transpose in that case. And so we're going to do the same thing right here because things change up a little bit differently. Notice that, again, a is u sigma v transpose based off of our decomposition. And then a transpose gives us v sigma u transpose. Well, notice then in the middle here we have V transpose V this time. So this simplifies down to U sigma squared U transpose. Again stacking that up to a, our eigen decomposition of a similar or, or the same A by A transpose matrix. 
we can see that uh, the same relationship still holds between lambda and sigma squared. So we're going to compute the singular values in the same way. And this time, the eigenvectors are going to be the columns of our U matrix, not our V matrix.